questions, question oral, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Emergency Preparedness Minister told the committee the law enforcement never asked for the Emergencies Act. Yet another contradiction of the Public Safety Minister. Nobody's backing him up, Mr. Speaker, not even his own colleagues. It's clear the Minister has been misleading Canadians for months. Will the Prime Minister remove him from his portfolio? Yes or no? Honourable Prime Minister. Allow me to be very clear with Canadians. Police do not grant themselves extraordinary powers. The government does that, and then Parliament debated and voted on it. As Commissioner Lucky said, the, the Emergencies Act gave the police the powers they needed to get the job done. Municipalities, provincial leadership, and police told us they needed more tools to bring these illegal blockades to an end, and that's exactly what we did and then what they, they did uh, when we gave them more tools with the Emergencies Act. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, the Minister of Public Safety has misled Canadians several times. He said protesters started fires in an Ottawa apartment building. That was false. He said foreign money was funding the protest. Not true. And he said law enforcement asked for the Emergencies Act. Also false. So does the Prime Minister agree that Canadians deserve better than a minister who repeatedly and overtly misleads them? The Honourable Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, what we see right now is the Conservative Party desperately trying to distract Canadians from the fact that they stood with these illegal blockaders. They encouraged them. Uh, they continue uh, to make apologies uh, for having sh uh, these people having shut down communities, uh, hurt our economy, cost people jobs at the same time as police uh, were trying to do their jobs. They asked for more tools. We granted them more tools with the Emergencies Act, uh, and we were able to get uh, things back to normal in this country. Uh, people are free to protest legally, but not illegally. That's what Conservative politicians don't seem to understand. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The only people whose actions are being scrutinized right now are the Prime Ministers and the Minister of Public Sorry. Safety. In fact, as the committee's investigation into the government's use of the Act continues, it's clear the legal threshold wasn't met to justify its use. It's clear by the day the emergencies Act was used for one thing and one thing only, and that was to get the Prime Minister out of hot water. And it looks like the reason the Prime Minister isn't firing the Minister of Public Safety is because the Minister is helping cover for the Prime Minister. Isn't that the sad but real ri reality right now, Mr. Speaker? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, for three weeks, uh, our uh, communities uh, here in Ottawa were facing illegal blockades. Uh, the work on Parliament was disrupted. Uh, supply lines uh, were challenged. Uh, border crossings were interrupted. Uh, people were losing their jobs and factories were closing. And Conservative uh, politicians stood with them, encouraging uh, these illegal blockades. Uh, we worked with police to give them uh, more tools. And when they asked for even and more tools, uh, we delivered the Emergencies Act that allowed things to get back under control. Mr. Speaker, there are open and transparent inquiries into that, and we're uh, uh, working with them on everything like that. The opposition. The inquiry and the committee's investigative work is finding that there is less and less evidence for the government to have used the Emergencies Act, and the evidence points to the only reason they use it was to cover up for the Prime Minister's problems that he was finding himself in. Unfortunately, because the Minister has misled, the work of the committee is being di disrupted and corrupted. When strong women, though, it's very interesting to see when strong women stand up and speak truth to the Prime Minister, he has no problem firing them. When a Minister of the Crown misleads Canadians, that's completely fine. He overlooks it. Mr. Speaker, why does the Prime Minister get rid of people who have integrity and speak the truth, but defend... Honourable Prime Minister. Wow, Mr. Speaker, we can see very clearly how desperate the Conservatives are to try and change the channel from uh, the important work being done in the inquiry, in the uh, uh, follow-ups to the Emergencies Act to highlight uh, the challenges that these illegal blockaders uh, posed uh, to our economy, uh, to our municipalities, and to Canadians. Uh, 
police asked us for more tools uh, because they said they were have they couldn't uh, deal with the situation with the existing tools. We delivered the Emergencies Act uh, in a responsible, proportional way, which ended the crisis. At the same time, Conservative politicians kept supporting these blockades. Well, leader of the opposition. Well, this isn't the first time the Prime Minister has kept a disgraced minister in his cabinet. He defended the former defence minister who covered up sexual harassment in the military. The Prime Minister calls Canadians he disagrees with names, he divides and stigmatizes for political gain, and he demotes female MPs who stand up to him. Yeah. Isn't it true the only reason the Prime Minister won't fire the Minister of Public Safety is because that minister is doing and saying exactly what the Prime Minister wanted him to do. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, Mr. Speaker, we see the lengths to which the Conservative uh, Conservatives will go uh, to try and uh, distract and deflect from the fact that they stood on the wrong side uh, of this uh, this issue. They stood uh, against hardworking Canadians who were disrupted in their daily lives, people who lost their jobs, uh, factories and supply chains uh, interrupted, uh, all because of illegal blockades. Uh, the Conservatives continue uh, to stand with. Uh, uh, illegal blockaders, uh, while we uh, work, worked hard to make sure that police had the tools necessary uh, to put an end to them. The Honourable Member for Belay Chambly. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this year, the Prime Minister invoked the Emergencies Measures Act after the illegal occupation of Parliament Hill. The Minister of Public Safety stated that that was done at the request of police forces. But no police force actually requested the act. Not the RCMP, not Ontario Provincial Police, not Ottawa Police. Will the Prime Minister recognize that for the second time in two days, his government has misled Quebecers and Canadians? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to say very clearly to Canadians that police forces are not the ones who impose emergency powers. It is the government that must do so. Parliament debated the bill and adopted it. As Commissioner Lucky stated, the Emergencies Act gave police forces the powers they needed to accomplish this task. Municipalities, provincial leaders, and police officers told us they needed more tools in order to dismantle the blockades, and that is exactly what we delivered. The Honourable Member for Belleuil Chambly. Yesterday, the committee reviewing the Act had the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Emergency Preparedness, former Minister of Public Safety. They appeared at the committee and they testified that this was a purely political decision and was not made at the request of police forces. So who here is not telling the truth? Which of the ministers is not telling the truth? And as for the Prime Minister, is he telling the truth or not? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, our government and ministers have always been very clear. It is not up to police forces to grant themselves new powers. It is up to the government to take that decision. And that is exactly what we did. When provincial and municipal authorities and police forces were asking us for more tools, we granted them that. And then we looked to see if they needed even more. And we realized that the only way to do that was to deliver with the Emergency Measures Act. I will just interrupt. I will just interrupt the Right Honourable Prime Minister. We have a problem with the screen in the chamber. And some members want to be able to see everything that's happening. So if we could just fix that, make sure it's working. And then if the Prime Minister can start over once the problem is fixed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. From the beginning, the Right Honourable Prime Minister, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our government and all our ministers have always been very clear. It is not up to police forces to grant themselves further powers. It's up to the government and politicians to make that decision. After our police forces and our provincial leaders asked for more tools, we delivered with the Emergencies Measures Act in a reasonable and proportionate manner. 
that is exactly what people expected from us. And that's what ended up fixing the situation. Be south. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One out of four Canadians will lose their home if interest rates continue to rise. One out of four Canadians are going hungry because they can't afford their groceries. And the Minister of Finance is going to give a speech tomorrow, which was supposed to respond to their needs, and instead is going to be a re-announcement of previous measures, none of which which will help people right now. People need immediate support so they can make ends meet. Why does this Prime Minister continue to ignore the plight of people and refuse to deliver financial support directly to families who need it most? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I recommend that my honourable colleague and indeed all colleagues in this House uh, take advantage of the opportunities coming up to speak with Canadians who've seen their childcare expenses cut in half uh, in different parts of this country as more parts of this country, like Ontario and others, uh, do that in the coming weeks and months. That's because of federal investments made, yes, over the past many months, but are landing right now in people's bank accounts and pocketbooks. At the same time, in, in the coming weeks, we will be increasing uh, the Canada Child Benefit alongside the cost of living. Those are concrete helps delivered now. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. People need help today. Les gens ont besoin d'aide. People need help now to pay bills, to make ends meet, to pay for groceries. Will this government, will the Prime Minister support our proposal to increase the GST credit and increase the Canada Child Benefit in order to help families now, families that need help. The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, the Canada Child Benefit will be increased in the weeks to come because it is indexed to the cost of living. That will be direct assistance for families. Families throughout the country will benefit from a decrease in costs thanks to assistance for childcare because we have invested in recent months with the provinces in order to reduce those costs. In Ontario and other provinces, that will be coming up in the weeks and months to come. We will be there to help families and we will continue to be there. The Honourable Member for mégantic lérable Mr. Speaker, the truth is coming out. The Prime Minister said today it's not up to police forces to grant themselves more powers. So he recognized that it is not police forces that ask for the Emergencies Act. That is exactly the opposite of what the Minister of Public Safety has said over and over again. Ministerial responsibility doesn't seem to mean anything to this Prime Minister's Liberal government. Will the Prime Minister also mislead the House and repeat what his Minister said? Or will he ask him to resign? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, during the blockades crisis, police forces, provincial and municipal authorities all asked us repeatedly for more tools in order to put an end to the blockades and these illegal demonstrations. And that's exactly what we delivered, including with the Emergencies Act which we brought in in a restrained and responsible fashion in order to end the blockades, and that's exactly what happened. Meanwhile, conservative politicians took the side of the demonstrators and those who were putting up the blockades. The Honourable Member, what exactly did they ask for? The Prime Minister just said that police officers asked the government to do more, to bring in special measures, the Emergencies Act, perhaps. So the Prime Minister is repeating the same things as were said by the Minister of Public Safety. This is a scandal. The Prime Minister is also misleading the House. He has a choice today. He can do the honourable thing, apologise and ask his minister to resign. Will he do that, yes or no? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. The Conservatives are clearly quite desperate to distract Canadians from their role in encouraging these illegal blockades. As I've said, yes, police forces asked for more tools, and we gave them more. 
We sent RCMP officers. We sent additional resources. And when they needed even more resources and tools, we finally invoked the Emergency Measures Act. It's not up to the police to invoke the Emergencies Act. It's up to the government to make that decision, and that's exactly what we did. Calgary, Minnapur. In April, the Minister for Public Safety said that at the recommendation of police, we invoked the Emergencies Act. But his colleagues are saying that there was never a recommendation from law enforcement. When he was appointed as the minister, he swore an oath to be true and faithful. But we know he hasn't lived up to that pledge. So will the Prime Minister hold the minister accountable and fire him for misleading Canadians? Right Honourable Prime Minister. I can understand if perhaps uh, for Conservative politicians, recollections of what happened in April are a little bit fuzzy. Uh, they were out celebrating and supporting the people barricading our streets here in Ottawa and uh, preventing goods from flowing across the border. What we were doing was talking to police who continually were asking for more support and more tools, whether it was more resources, whether it was uh, more, uh, uh, more, uh, more, uh, more money or more, uh, more uh, uh, RC CMP officers, uh, we were there to respond to their need for more tools, and we finally did that uh, with the invocation of the Emergencies Act, which was the government's decision, not police officers' decision. For Calgary, Minnapur. The Minister of Public Safety told Canadians over and over again that the authorities were the ones who had asked for the Emergencies Act. Yet the Minister of Emergency Preparedness testified, I'm not aware of any recommendation of law enforcement. Quite frankly, this is a decision of government. The Minister of Public Safety has not lived up to his oath of office. So when will the Prime Minister take immediate action and fire the Minister of Public Safety? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. While Conservative politicians were busy supporting and celebrating with barricaders along Wellington Street and uh, across the country, we were working with police who continually asked uh, for more help and more support to be able to deal with this public or, or order emergency. That's exactly what we continue to do throughout the three weeks uh, until and up, up to the moment in which we chose to bring in the Emergencies Act to restore uh, order to this country and uh, to the situation. We did it in a proportional and reasonable way, and it brought an end to these illegal actions. Member for Red Deer Lacombe. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Public Safety's own department confirmed that the police did not ask for the Emergencies Act to be invoked, and now the Minister of Emergency Preparedness has also publicly agreed. In the Prime Minister's 2015 Open and Accountable Government document, he wrote, for Canadians to trust our government, we must trust Canadians and we will only be successful in implementing our agenda to the extent that we earn and keep this trust. The Minister of Public Safety has shattered that trust. Mm -hmm. When will the Prime Minister fire him? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while Conservative politicians uh, were out there supporting barricaders, while they continue to support uh, those illegal actions, uh, we were working with law enforcement and municipal and provincial authorities across this country who were telling us they needed more tools. And we delivered more tools, whether it was uh, more police officers or more resources, uh, until we realized we needed to take a further step. And we chose to invoke the Emergencies Act to give them even further tools. We did it in a resp responsible and proportional way, and it worked, Mr. Speaker. Uh, before going back to the question, I just want to remind the honourable members that if they want to talk to each other, they can cross over and talk and talk very lowly. Shouting across or talking very loud across just interrupts everyone else, so I just want to remind them of that. The honourable member for Red Deer Lacombe. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Emergency Preparedness made it clear last night at committee that the Minister of Public Safety has misled Canadians. The Prime Minister's open and accountable government document also reads, Ministers cannot dissociate themselves from or repudiate the decisions of Cabinet or their Ministry colleagues unless they resign from the Ministry. Only one of these two Ministers can be right. The Prime Minister can't agree with both of them, so which one does he agree with? And when will the Prime Minister fire 
the Minister of Public Safety. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, every step of the way, we worked with uh, local police services and with res uh, responsible authorities uh, to ensure that they got the resources and the tools that they needed uh, to get this situation back under control. They continually asked for more tools, and we continued to step up with extra officers, with extra resources, with extra finances, and ultimately with the Emergencies Act that Absolutely. It is only a government that can choose to invoke that and to do so in a limited and restrained way is exactly what we did. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Mr. Speaker, the Federal Board of Fiasco is breaking records. It's becoming an incredibly difficult thing to just fly abroad. First of all, you have to line up for 24 hours to get a passport, thanks to the Minister of Families. Then travellers have to wait for hours at the airport because 3,000 Border Services officers are missing, thanks to the Minister, Minister of Transport. It's a perfect storm for travelers. Mr. Speaker, when several ministers fail at the same time like this, it's a sign that the problem comes from higher up. When will the Prime Minister clean up his border fiasco? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we understand that people are facing difficulties because of the global pandemic. That's why it is not just Canada that is facing challenges at airports and border checkpoints. We are seeing these problems throughout the world. That is why we have hired around 600 new employees in passport centers. We are investing in order to help airports because we know that both airports and air transport companies are facing labor shortage problems. We will be there to support them. But we know that this is a hard time for Canadians, and we are working hard to fix, it, to fix the situation. The Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't, stop, it doesn't stop there. The Minister of Foreign Affairs is also in trouble because her staff member was partying at the Russian embassy. What a great idea. And the Minister of Public Safety is also in trouble with his alternative facts about the Emergency Measures Act. And what about the Minister of Immigration? His department is where permanent residency applications go to die. And the Minister of the Environment has become an oil promoter. When all the musicians are playing out of tune at once, the real problem is the conductor. In this case, the Prime Minister. When will he finally tackle his own problems instead of constantly sticking his nose into Quebec's business? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I am here to serve all Canadians, including Quebecers. And that is why we will, we will continue to invest to help Quebec families, to help them face current challenges, whether at the borders or in our health system. We will always be there and partner with provincial governments. We will partner with municipalities. We will partner with small businesses and Canadians who need help. We know that this pandemic has been very difficult, but we have been there for Canadians, and we will continue to be there. Dury White Rock. Mr. Speaker, the Emergency Preparedness Minister said the police didn't recommend enacting the Emergencies Act, nor would it have been appropriate. The Public Safety Minister has said for months that the police requested the Act. The Deputy Prime Minister and Committee is now amazingly vague on her recollections uh, yeah. on this controversial issue. The RCMP and Ottawa Police said they didn't request the Act be used. Period. When will the Prime Minister uphold accountability, transparency, and ethics and ask for the Public Safety Minister's resignation? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's amazing the lengths to which Conservative politicians will go to try and deflect from the fact that they were standing with blockaders and continue to support uh, the illegal. We worked with police and uh, local authorities every step of the way who asked for more resources, which we delivered, whether it was more police officers, whether it was uh, more uh, financial resources, or ultimately uh, the Emergencies Act, which we chose to bring in to give people the tools necessary to put an end to these illegal protests. Member for South Surrey, White Rock. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Public Safety misled Canadians repeatedly, using the Emergencies Act after its invocation and needing the Act beforehand are two very different things. This Liberal government invoked a Canada-wide Civil Liberties Limiting Act to force tow truckers, tow truck drivers to move trucks. 
not exactly proportional. This scandal-ridden liberal, scandal liberal government has a serious issue with transparency. From SNC to we, it seems to be in their DNA. When will the Prime Minister ensure the Public Safety Minister's resignation? Here, here. Honourable Prime Minister. Again, Mr. Speaker, we see minimizing the very real disruptions that Canadians faced uh, during the uh, during the blockades. Uh, they stood with and encouraged the blockaders, while at the same time ignoring Canadians who were afraid to go to work or leave their apartments, Canadians who were losing their jobs and uh, businesses that were shut down because of supply chain disruptions. These are things that we took seriously while uh, Conservative politicians were celebrating alongside uh, the blockaders. Uh, we used proportional, responsible measures, and we got it done. The Honourable Member for Bellechasse, Les Eshma Lévis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, the Minister of Emergency Preparedness, who is a colleague of the Minister of Public Safety, said the following, I'm not aware of any recommendation from law enforcement. Quite frankly, it's a government decision. That completely contradicts what the Minister of Public Safety said. He has misled Canadians and this House. There must be consequences, Mr. Speaker. Will the Prime Minister do the honourable thing and fire this minister? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, during the blockades crisis, police forces, provincial authorities, including a minister from Alberta, all told us that they didn't have the tools they needed to end the situation. They needed more resources, more tools. We delivered. We sent them resources, more police officers. But then, in the end, we chose to invoke the Emergencies Act because it offered the specific and proportionate tools necessary to end the crisis. And that's exactly what happened. The Honourable Member for belle chasse malévy Mr. Speaker, contrary to what the Minister of Public Safety has said, neither the RCMP nor Ottawa Police asked for the emergency measures. But as usual, when confronted with his contradictions, this Prime Minister ducks and dodges, blames others, and when nothing else works, he lashes out. He's been doing that since the beginning of QP. Ministerial responsibility seems to be a, con a concept this government just doesn't get. When will the Prime Minister finally learn and remove the Minister from office? The right honourable Prime Minister. Well, despite my honourable colleague's outrage, she should ask her colleagues who were there encouraging these illegal demonstrators. She should ask them why they supported those people and not the forces of law and order who wanted to protect Canadians in their homes, who needed more tools. And yes, we delivered those tools thanks to the Emergencies Act. We did so in a responsible and proportionate manner. And we ended the illegal blockades. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, it didn't take a crystal ball to realize that Canadians would start traveling again. And what we've seen in the airports are massive delays across the country. These are delays that could have been prevented if the sufficient steps are taken ahead of time. Hiring staff, making sure they've got good wages, making sure the conditions of work are appropriate so that we can have the staffing levels required so there weren't delays. So what is the Prime Minister going to do now? To hire make sure they're well paid so we can deal with the delays in the airports for Canadians trying to travel. Here, Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, I want to thank the uh, member opposite for actually highlighting one of the big challenges that are being faced right now by airlines and airports, which are staffing shortages. Uh, that's something that's not just happening in Canada. Indeed, we're seeing those kinds of disruptions at airports around the world, whether it be Amsterdam, whether it be Paris, whether it be other significant airports around the world that are facing these kinds of challenges and delays. Uh, we invested uh, early in hiring more staff for CBSA, st hiring more staff staff at passport offices. Uh, fortunately, we did because uh, the problems would be even worse. But we do recognize there are challenges and we are working hard every day to solve them for Canadians. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. It's not surprising that people want to travel again and that they'll need their passport to travel. But the delay to obtain a passport is extreme. It's unacceptable. Will the government and the Prime Minister ensure that we hire 
the necessary workers to meet the needs of people. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. That's exactly what we have done, Mr. Speaker. At the beginning of the year, well before these challenges came to light, we hired 600 employees and we're going to hire 600 more. We know that we have to deliver passports and I'd like to say that this allowed us to help more issue more than 360 passports since the beginning of April, but Canadians are still waiting. This is unacceptable, and that's why we're working day and night to be able to solve this situation and help Canadians. For St. John's East. Mr. Speaker, Hans Island has been subject to a 50-year-long territorial dispute between Canada and Denmark. While the whiskey war raged on, it was high time that we found a permanent solution that affirmed Canada's sovereignty and respected the rights of the Inuit. Can the Prime Minister share with this House the significance of the announcement of the historic agreement between Denmark and Canada, which resolved this dispute? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for St. John's East for her important question and her tremendous hard work. As global security is threatened, it's more important than ever for democracies like Canada and Denmark to work together to resolve our differences in accordance with international law. That's why we jointly announced a historic agreement to settle the whiskey war and the dispute over Hans Island once and for all. We will continue working with our partners like Denmark to protect the security and stability in the Arctic while doing so hand in hand with indigenous peoples. The Honourable Member for Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, the Public Safety Minister has said repeatedly that law enforcement recommended the government invoke the Emergencies Act. But yesterday, the Emergency Preparedness Minister stood in committee, and I quote, I'm not aware of any recommendation of law enforcement, end quote. Whoa. Mr. Speaker, suspending civil liberties is serious. So is misleading the House. Simple question to the Prime Minister. Does he believe the Minister has acted honourably? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while Conservative politicians were out supporting the blockaders uh, and standing with the illegal protesters, uh, we were busy working with uh, law enforcement and authorities across the country to deliver them tools that they needed, whether it be uh, extra police officers uh, or extra financial resources or tools. We were there for that. Ultimately, we chose to deliver in a proportional and responsible way the Emergencies Act, uh, which had measures that helped put an end to these blockades. This was something that we had to do for the good of all Canadians. Member for Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, the Public Safety Minister is putting the government in a very difficult position. He has said the police requested the invocation of the Act. Clearly, that's not the case. None of his Cabinet colleagues concur with him. Neither does his Deputy Minister. The Minister needs to take some time to reflect on the principle of ministerial accountability and on the integrity of our parliamentary system and needs to decide what the honourable course of action is. Will he do that? Resign. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, every step of the way we worked with uh, police services and local authorities uh, on ensuring that they had the tools they needed to be able to put an end to these illegal blockades, uh, these illegal protests. Uh, when we chose to invoke the Emergencies Act, uh, it was to deliver more tools uh, that the police ultimately used to put an end to these illegal disruptions to so many Canadians' lives. While Conservative politicians were busy uh, celebrating with and encouraging uh, these illegal protesters, we acted to keep Canadians safe. Honourable Member for Dufferin Caledon. And Mr. Speaker, this today is how ministerial accountability dies. A Prime Minister who obfuscates, will not answer, and a Minister who refuses to resign. The Minister of Public Safety clearly and unequivocally did not tell the truth. And Ministers in the past have resigned on principle. Ministers like Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott. Yeah, yeah. Will the Prime Minister show he has some principles and get that Minister fired? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker.
while we were focused on serving Canadians and getting them uh, back to work, getting their lives back, getting their streets back, um, conservative politicians were busy supporting and celebrating uh, alongside these illegal protesters and barricaders. Uh, we, intend, we focused on delivering the support that the police services needed to put an end uh, to this, uh, which ultimately led up to uh, us choosing to invoke the Emergencies Act, which gave them tools necessary that worked to put an end to these illegal uh, blockades. Uh, that was what we were focused on, and that's what we continue to be focused on, Mr. Speaker, Canadians. Dufferin Caledon. Mr. Speaker, what we're witnessing here today by the Prime Minister is a poor man's masterclass on how to avoid accountability. And we deserve accountability. Canadians deserve accountability. This minister needs to be held to account. He has misspoken, he has misled, and he has misinformed this House and the Canadian public. His position is completely untenable. The Prime Minister won't even answer a question directly on this. Prime Minister, show some principles, show your minister has some principles, Get him to resign or fire him. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, in February, when blockades and occupations disrupted our economy, hurt workers and endangered public safety, we invoked the Emergencies Act to help bring them to an end. We've now announced the Public Order Emergency Commission, an independent public inquiry, to examine the, uh, the circumstances that led to the declaration being issued and the measure taken in response as required under the Act. We are acting in openness and transparency, but we know the members of the Conservative Party might not want light shed on these events given their support of these blockades, but Canadians want to know the truth. The Honourable Member for Repentigny. According to the Globe and Mail, senior officials are warning that the oil and gas industry will fall short, at least by half, of its greenhouse gas reduction targets. Why? Because, on the one hand, the Prime Minister refused to cap fossil fuel production, and on the other, his targets are based on inefficient carbon capture technologies. Let's face it, Mr. Speaker. Carbon capture is an oil unicorn. Does the Prime Minister realize that these targets have no chance of being met and are irresponsible and that unicorns do not exist? The Honour Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Member should uh, listen to institutes such as the Climate Change Institute, Clean Prosperity and others that have supported our plans, that have understood that our plan clearly defines the contributions that every sector has to make to attain our climate targets. We promised an ambitious and achievable plan to reduce pollution and to create opportunities for Canadians, and that's exactly what we are offering with this emission reductions plan. The Honourable Member for Avignon La Matisse. Mr. Speaker, between the 81 megatons of emission reductions the government is projecting for the oil and gas industry and the 43 megatons that experts estimate it will cut for real, there's a difference of 38 megatons. That's the weight of magical thinking. And that's what the UN Secretary General called a dangerous disconnect yesterday. The gap between what needs to be done to fight climate change and what politicians are actually doing, when is the Prime Minister going to understand that it's completely out of touch uh, to think that his targets will happen without cutting oil and gas? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the analysis that my colleague is referring to was a pre preliminary analysis that did not take account the new of the new investments and measures that will boost our capacity to reduce reduction emissions. I suggest that my colleague refer to the prestigious organizations such as the Canadian Institute for Climate Change and others such as the Petroleum Technology Alliance of Canada that have confirmed the benefits of our plan that have established 
forecasts in our plan. Hampton, Kent, Middlesex. The Prime Minister has repeatedly parroted the Minister of Public Safety by saying that police called for the use of the Emergencies Act. Now, this false information was spread by the Minister of Public Safety, and by defending such incompetence, the Prime Minister is being played for a fool. Now, we know this information is false because the former Minister of Public Safety has said, and I quote, quite frankly, this is a decision of government. Will the Prime Minister accept personal responsibility for this misinformation and fire his minister? Here, here, bravo. Honourable Prime Minister. I have been very clear over the past weeks, and indeed through all the questions asked during this question period, that throughout uh, the crisis in February, we were working closely with police uh, services and with provincial and municipal authorities who were asking for more tools, uh, which we continually delivered, whether it was more police officers, uh, more concrete re resources, or ultimately we chose to invoke the Emergencies Act, which gave uh, proportional and responsible uh, tools uh, that allowed the um, uh, police services to put an end to these illegal blockades that Conservatives were busy supporting. A member for Leeds Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Well, the public safety minister has continued to tell the country that law enforcement told him to invoke the Emergencies Act, but that's just not true. And yesterday, the emergency preparedness minister said, and I quote, I do not believe that would have been an appropriate thing for law enforcement to ask, and they did not ask, end quote. Cabinet is clearly isolating the minister. We gave him the chance to resign honorably, and he refused. Will the Prime Minister fire that minister? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, what we see today is a Conservative Party desperate to try and prevent Canadians from remembering uh, that Conservative politicians stood side by side, these barricaders uh, and blockaders and illegal protesters, while they were trying to disrupt Canadians' lives, while they were harming our economy, while they were uh, hurting factories and workers across the country uh, with their illegal protests. Uh, we worked with uh, police services and authorities to give them uh, the tools they needed to put an end uh, to these barricades, including deciding ultimately to invoke the, uh, the Emergencies Act in a proportional and responsible way. Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, birds of a feather, I guess, because to fire someone in his cabinet for dishonourable conduct, the Prime Minister would have to look himself in the mirror. The Public Safety Minister uttered a barefaced falsehood at committee, and he continues to shamelessly mislead Canadians. He's no longer fit for the Queen's Privy Council. Will the Prime Minister fire him today? That's right. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while Canadians uh, were struggling uh, through the impacts of these illegal blockades and these illegal protests, uh, while Conservatives were standing with them, encouraging them, we were working uh, with police services and authorities across the country to bring an end uh, to the disruption faced by so many ordinary Canadians in their lives. Uh, that's why we delivered more and more tools throughout the three-week process and ultimately why we decided to invoke the Emergencies Act in a proportional and responsible way. No, no, I... The Honourable Member for Dorval, Lachine LaSalle. Mr. Speaker. The unjust war in Ukraine is having a huge impact on countries around the world. This war is causing a global food shortage. The conflict, combined with the effects of climate change and the pandemic, threatens to push tens of millions of people into food insecurity, hunger and starvation, particularly in Africa. Can the Prime Minister inform the House what Canada is doing to help people around the world who are facing such a food security crisis? Thank you. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for Dor Dorval Lachine Lachelle for her question and her hard work. Russia's aggression is having a significant and immediate impact on the food security and nutrition of the world's most vulnerable people. This is why we announced that Canada will provide $100 million to help the African Development Bank to support the growth of small and medium-sized agri-food businesses. This funding will help increase food security on the continent while promoting inclusive and sustainable economic growth.
The Honorable Member for Barry Innisfil. This culture of deception, deflection, not being accountable, blaming others, entitlement, and this culture of division has been a culture created by this Prime Minister. He has set the example for others in his cabinet to follow. So it's no surprise to anyone to see the Public Safety Minister using the tactics of his Prime Minister. The Prime Minister didn't hesitate to force out Jody Wilson-Raybould or Jane Philpott for speaking the truth to his power. Will the Prime Minister for once do the right thing, do the honourable thing, and fire the Minister of Public Safety? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while Conservatives continue to focus on me, I will continue to focus on Canadians alongside all the extraordinary members of our team. Uh, we are focused on uh, fighting uh, against inflation, on supporting Canadians with the cost of living, including with things uh, like cutting childcare fees in half and increasing the Canada Child Benefit with the cost of inflation, as will happen in the coming months, uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, we will continue as well to make sure uh, that Conservative politicians who uh, stood with illegal protesters and blocking uh, fostering division in this country, uh, you know, get remembered by Canadians uh, because we chose to invoke the Emergencies Act to put an end to the. Be, be, be. Before we go to the next question, I just want to remind the honourable members, I'm starting to hear some more rumble and talking, maybe just whispering a little bit lighter would be better. The honourable member for Carleton. Twice, but 13 times did this public safety minister claim the police told them to suspend people's civil liberties with the Emergencies Act. Not only did the cops say that's not true, but yesterday, two of his fellow ministers, including the deputy prime minister, said it's not true. And today, the prime minister refused to say that his public safety minister had acted honorably. If his fellow ministers don't think he is honorable and truthful, why is he still in cabinet? Yeah. Honorable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, while the member opposite uh, concerns himself supposedly with the freedom of Canadians to protest uh, illegally, uh, we're going to continue to stand uh, with Canadians who had their lives disrupted uh, by the illegal blockades and and uh, and protesters uh, who uh, who took uh, uh, took such lengths to try and shut down our economy uh, over uh, over the month of February. We have continued to work with continue to work with police officers with services. Uh, with uh, local authorities to give them the tools we needed and ultimately chose to invoke the Emergencies Act to keep Canadians safe and to put an end to these barricades. Honourable Member for Carleton. Disrupting people's lives? This from the, the guy who took away the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of people because of a, an unscientific mandate that robbed them of their individual freedom. I'm going to interrupt the Honourable Member. Uh, we were doing so well. I just don't want to ruin it. Please calm down. And the honourable member, the honourable member for Carleton, from the top, please. This uh, disrupting people's lives. This is a prime minister who disrupted the lives of tens, if not hundreds, of thousands of people because of a personal medical decision. Everything this government has been saying about our truckers has been false from the very beginning, starting with the claim that they would spread a, they would spread a virus even though they're in a truck all alone all day long, and ending with the recent claim that the police had asked for the Emergencies Act. Now that the government has admitted that the public safety minister stated falsehoods, will the prime minister do the honourable thing and fire him? You're here. Honourable prime minister. Speaker, every step of the way throughout this global pandemic, we had Canadians' backs, and that meant uh, ensuring that we followed science, uh, that we did everything necessary to keep people safe, and that we did everything necessary to make sure our economy would spring back as quickly as possible. Now, the member opposite knows full well that he stood against our scientific measures to keep Canadians safe. He stood against the measures we put forward to support small businesses, to support families, to get through this pandemic and indeed stood against the measures that have led us to recovering 115 percent of the jobs lost during the pandemic when the U.S. has only lost, uh, recovered 95 percent. We had Canadians' backs, Mr. Speaker. That's what we were doing during the pandemic. The Honourable Member for Vancouver, Granville. 
Mr. Speaker, in the digital era, cybersecurity is national security. Our critical infrastructure relies on interconnected networks and cyber systems every day. From our financial system to telecommunications and from the energy to transportation sectors, organizations need to be well prepared to be able to prevent and respond to cyber incidents. Can the Prime Minister inform this House how new legislation on cybersecurity will enable Canadian organizations to protect critical cyber infrastructure and our communities? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for Vancouver Granville for his question and his hard work. Cybersecurity is national security. Bill C-26 will help both the public and private sectors better protect themselves against cyber attacks and is one part of our robust strategy to defend Canada and the crucial infrastructure that Canadians rely on. We will always protect the safety and security of Canadians and will take any actions necessary to safeguard our telecommunications infrastructure. Member for Burnaby South. Mr. Speaker, two years ago, this Liberal government announced $724.1 million to support Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people in the face of gender-based violence. But here's the thing, we're dealing with Liberals. So two years later, guess how many, guess how much money was spent? Zero dollars. Zero dollars to support Indigenous women and girls and two-spirit people facing gender-based violence. Why is this government making announcements instead of taking concrete steps to support people facing gender-based violence? Here, here, here. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, that's simply not true. Over the past two years, we've invested hundreds of millions of dollars directly into grassroots organizations that have been there to support uh, survivors of domestic violence and, and gender-based violence, uh, addressing the ongoing violence, including that of the MMIWG, uh, requires living up to our goals as a country and respecting all the calls to justice. In June 2021, partners from across the country came together and released the National Action Plan to finally end this ongoing tragedy, and it'll be supported by Budget 2021's $2.2 billion investment in concrete measures that will keep people safe. Honourable Member for Spadina, Fort York. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are facing soaring gas prices. However, most consumers are unaware of the federal government's hidden fleecing. It's called tax cascading, and it must stop. In Ontario, the government applies HST to fuel purchase and then applies it to the excise tax, the carbon tax, and the provincial tax. The government is taxing taxes. If serious about helping Canadians, the government should take its triple-dipping tax hands out of consumers' pockets. Will the Prime Minister eliminate tax cascading and provide Canadians with a fuel tax rebate from the massive slash fund, slush fund that he is raking in? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, the investments that we have made uh, have been directed at supporting families and the vulnerable uh, through these difficult times. Uh, we chose to invest billions of dollars uh, to ensure that childcare fees uh, get cut in half this year. And we're seeing that right across the country having an incredibly positive impact on families where it's coming into place. Uh, and uh, a lot of people in various jurisdictions, like the member's own province of Ontario, are looking forward to that kicking in for them as well. We're also increasing the Canada Child Benefit to match the cost of inflation in the coming weeks to make sure that families have more money uh, with the for the cost of living, for the cost of groceries and everyday items. That's part of what we're doing to have Canadians back. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. C'est tout le temps que nous avons pour la... That's all the time. That is all the time we have for question period today. Before we continue, I'd like to thank all my members. It's a day that I think we can all be very proud of.